Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Now, I'm teaching on types of prayer. And when I say types of prayer, I use the word types to deal with it being specific. But I want to say this from this standpoint. In your life, you run into diff different situations, different um, difficulties, whatever you want to call them. But what you need to understand is when someone says pray to you, you need to know how to pray for that specific situation. And that's what God is talking about in his word in Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, he's dealing with spiritual warfare. And in case you don't know this yet, when you or being a Christian, you are all of the time in spiritual warfare. In fact, God said in his word in 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says, fight the good fight of faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, the weapons of our what? Warfare. Because the Christian life is a warfare. In case you didn't know it, the devil doesn't want you to win. The devil doesn't want you to receive the blessings of God. And he will do everything he possibly can to keep you from receiving them. In fact, the scripture tells you that. So for you to learn how to be successful in every area of your life, you must learn how to pray. And you must learn how to pray in each circumstance that you face. Well, God has it in his word. Um, so you need to get into the word, find out. And even though I'm just giving you the names, I'm giving you the purposes of them. I'm not teaching you the actual prayer. We'll go back and cover that at a later date. But I, hopefully just getting the information will make you want to at least learn how to pray. Okay? Now, in Ephesians chapter 6, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, starting at verse uh, 10, it says, Finding my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he says, Put on what? The whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the what? Devil. So the devil, that word wiles literally means tricks and devices. That's what it means. So the devil plays tricks on you. The devil has devices. The devil has things that will hinder you from receiving from God. And if you don't know what it is, if you don't know that it's him, then you got a problem. Now, look at the very first part of verse 12 and read it out loud up to the word blood. Read. One more time. One more time. One more time. Now, I'm going to give you the meaning of that scripture, that statement. Everybody say this with me. Say, people... Are not, are not my problem. My problem. Say it one more time. But you got to be honest. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to be honest. Now watch this. Every problem that you have ever had in your life came through a person. Would you agree? But the person was not the problem. It was the spirit working through the person. So because you don't realize that you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live inside of a physical body, because you don't realize there is a spirit realm and God tells us to walk in the spirit, our battle is in the spirit realm. It's not with people. Amen. Our battle is never with individuals. What we have to learn to do is take authority over the spirit that's working through the person. Amen. And when you learn how to do that, you'll have more victories in your life, okay? Amen. But say that with me again. Say, people... Are not, are not my problem. My problem. Now, if you're sitting next to your, your husband or you're sitting next to your wife, just turn and face them. Say, you're not my problem. Not my problem. Says the demon working through you. <laughs> now, just messing with y'all. <laughs> but what happens, people start fighting each other because they don't realize it's the spirit working through them trying to drive them apart. So we have to learn how to seek first the kingdom of God. We have to learn how to get into the word. We have to learn how to deal with the situation in the spirit realm and not in our flesh. Amen? All right. Um, further down, um, verse, um, 
14, it says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, he's dealing with these pieces of armor, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench how many? All. How many? All. all the fiery darts of the wicked or the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word, the word of God. Next two words. The word of God doing what? The word of God doing what? So it says praying how often? Always. With all prayer. With all prayer. And supplication how? In the spirit. And, or in other words, praying spiritual prayers that will cause you to be victorious. But notice the term with what? All prayer. So that means there is more than one way to pray. Would you agree? So it's not just one way. There are more than one way. Now, um, I need to make, put a pin in the teaching here. I'm not going to deal with it because I will deal with it all by itself because I think it's very, very important to deal with the principles contained in it. But there is such a prayer that people use on a regular basis, and they call it, they call it what? The Lord's prayer. I can't hear you. The Lord's prayer. They call it the Lord's Prayer. But the Lord's Prayer written as it is, is not something we're supposed to pray. Now, like I said, I don't have time to deal with it, but I just want you to know that it's not a prayer that we're supposed to pray as it's written, although contained in the prayer, there are principles we can apply in our prayer life. So, I have a tape series. You can get it. Go look at it. It's called the Lord's Prayer. It's not for Christians because it isn't. But there are principles contained that we can use in our prayer life. There's another type of prayer that people pray. They think they're praying. It's called silent prayer. There is no such thing as silent prayer. I'm going to say it one more time. There is no such thing as silent prayer. I'll say it one more time. There is no such thing as silent prayer prayer. Amen. And when I say silent prayer, I'm talking about praying with the absence of speaking words. Praying with the absence of speaking words. Now, silent prayer most commonly is referred to as praying while you're thinking something. Okay? But God doesn't say when you pray, think. He says, when you pray, say. So if you call yourself praying by thinking thoughts, you are not praying. In fact, your prayers don't even get outside your head. It's blocked by your cranial cavity. Because it doesn't get to God. Because he commands in John chapter 16, or actually Matthew uh, chapter 26, he says, when you pray, what? Say. He says, when you pray, what? Say. He doesn't say, when you pray, think. Okay? So there's no such thing as silent prayer. Now, again, I have a teaching on that. I want you to see it according to the word. I want you to see it according to what Jesus said and what Jesus did and what the uh, principles say. But I want to move on with where we are right now. So say this with me. Say, Christians, Christians should, not pray should not pray what's commonly called, what's commonly called the Lord's Prayer. But there are, but there are principles, principles contained contain in the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's prayer that, we that we can use when we pray correctly. When we pray correctly. Say, silent prayer, silent prayer is, not is not of God. Okay, you got that? See, I want you to receive from God. And the only way you can receive from God is by his word. Do it the way he says, do it not the way you think you're supposed to do it. Amen? All right, now, we've already covered three types and I'll tell you the three we've already covered. Number one, ministering to the Lord, which I've always said is the number one most important type of prayer. Number two, intercessory prayer, which is the number two most important type of prayer. And number three, we covered the prayer of consecration and dedication. And you might want to put, that, put a real asterisk by that one because that's the one that's most unknown to people. But yet, 
out of that type of prayer, there's a question that people ask on a regular basis, but because they don't know how to pray that prayer, they don't get the answer. Okay, and that is, that question is, well, what am I here for? What is my purpose? What is my assignment in the earth realm? What does God want me to do? Why was I created? Well, see, that answer to that prayer comes as a result of you learning to pray the prayer of consecration and dedication. That's how it's done. It's real easy. You can get your purpose just like that. People have been asking about their purpose, trying to find out um, what God wants them to do for years, but they've never found out about the prayer of consecration and dedication, so therefore they never learned. And that's why the scripture says, my people are destroyed. What? <laughs> Don't you think it's pretty sad that you can live your whole life, die, and uh, when you wake up, you're standing before God, and he'll ask you a question, did you ever find out my purpose for your life? And you say no. Do you want to live your whole life and not know why God created you? Huh? You have a created purpose in you that was placed in you before the foundation of the world. God saw a problem. He said, okay, we're going to create him to solve that problem. That's how important you are. God saw something that he wanted to change, and he created you to change it. That's how unique, and that's how powerful you are. And, everybody say, and he gave you gifts he gave you qualities. He gave you talents to accomplish that goal. So you have to not only know what your purpose is, but you have to perfect the gifts, the qualities, and talents that he gave you to accomplish the goal. Now, people have been sitting in churches their whole life and never find that out. And guess what? We will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to answer for the things that we did or we did not do. So my suggestion to you, I always used to say it this way when I give the invitation, happiness is found in the perfect will of God. When you're in the right place, at the right time, doing exactly what God created you to do, then you're going to find happiness like you've never known it. I mean, you, you'll be living, you're talking about happy, your happy will be happy. Why? Because you're in a perfect will of God. Just, I had a brother, um, I forget who he is, he, he's here somewhere. Anyway, I had one of our guys, when he first came to the church, um, in fact, Minister Barnes said it just the other day. He said, you, you don't know what happy is until you lead somebody to the Lord. In fact, your, your, your whole life will change when you lead, something happens to you when you know that you've prayed for someone and that person has stepped into eternity because you did it. It don't get no better than that. So you may not understand it, but when you realize how important eternity is, we're all going to live forever. Everybody say forever. forever. Now, let me say that again. See, now I feel like I'll say it again. We are all going to live how long? Forever. So how long is Forever. Y'all don't answer it like that. Forever is forever. Say it this way. Say it, say, say it this way. Say there is no end, is no end to, forever. to forever. Okay, it's not going to stop. Now, eternal life is forever, but eternal damnation is forever also. So whoever you are, either you're going to live eternally, etern you'll have eternal life, or you'll have eternal damnation. Most powerful scripture in the Bible, people still don't understand it, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. The scripture is about love. It's not above the rest of it. You can stop right there. God so loved who? Not Christians. That scripture is not about Christians. So God so loved who? Or you could say God so loved the non-believers or the unbelievers or the people that are not saved. He loved them so much that he gave his only begotten son, which is his best gift. The best gift you can receive from anybody is Jesus. He sent Jesus into the earth realm so that they would not perish or die and go into eternal damnation, but have life, how long? 
everlasting. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. He sent Jesus so people wouldn't go there. But to not go there, you have to choose him. Okay, I'm going to say this one more time. I said it last Sunday, but I'm going to say it again. Okay, because that person sitting next to you might need it. Look at them. Say, are you saved or are you not saved? Ask them a question. Say, are you saved? saved? Say, don't don't let them get away with saying yes. Say, are you saved and you're sure about it? Okay, I said this last Sunday, and you need to always remember this. There's only one sin that will send you to hell. It's only one. Only one. Only one. I say there's only one sin that will send you to hell. And that is found in John 16. I believe it's verse uh, 13, 14, 15, somewhere around in there. It says of sin because they believe not on me. Of sin because they believe not on me. In other words, rejecting Jesus is the only sin that will send you to hell. Do you realize there are people in heaven that have committed murder? There are people in heaven that have committed rape. There are people in heaven that have done drugs. There are people in heaven that have mutilated people. Amen. There are people in heaven that have killed children. Homosexuals are in heaven. I know a lot of people have a hard time with that. But there are homosexuals in heaven. If they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord, and they believe that in their heart, they're going to heaven. Now, for the rest of the stuff they got to deal with, that's between them and God. I don't know. But I know one thing. The Scripture says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man, what? Believeth. And with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. I know, you, I know that person is saved. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So don't be judging people. That's not your job to judge people. In fact, you need to learn not to judge people. Christians are too judgmental. Instead of pointing a finger at somebody, telling them what they're doing, you need to ask them who they are. Do you know Jesus? Are you a Christian? And when you start living the Christian life, the way you're supposed to, all of those negative things you'll stop doing. You'll stop drinking. You'll stop smoking. You'll stop fornicating. You'll stop lying, hopefully. (laughs) Amen. So it's not those things that send a person to hell. What sends you to hell is you reject Jesus Christ. So our job, say my job, job. is to find find as many people as I possibly can, that are lost and do not know Jesus and show them the Jesus in me. That's your job. That's your job. That's everybody's job. See, that's, believe it or not, that's everybody's purpose, but that's not everybody's created purpose, although that is one of them. Okay, so all of us are supposed to reach out to the lost. Why? Because that's what Jesus came to do. He says he came to seek and to save the lost. Then he said, the works that I do, in John 14, 12, the works that I do shall ye do also. And what? Greater works than these shall ye do because I go unto the Father. So we're supposed to do what he did. So if he came to seek and save the lost, guess who else's job is that? Huh? I can't hear you. Okay. Now, next prayer. Turn to uh, James chapter 5. I'm going to go through these rather quickly because I'm not really teaching on them. I'm making you aware that they exist. Okay? James chapter 5. When you find it, say, I have it. Okay, if you're still looking, say, help me, Lord. (laughs) All right, James chapter 5, verse 13. It says, is any among you afflicted or going through trouble or going through distress or going through challenges? What does it say do? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the what? 
Underline that term, the prayer of faith. Shall save or deliver the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. So there's a prayer there called the prayer of what? Faith. Now, I want to define that for you real quick. The purpose of the prayer of faith is threefold. Number one, to get exactly, and underline the word exactly, what you, underline you, want from God. The prayer of faith is for you to get exactly, and the word, underline the word exactly, that lets you know you have to be specific. You can't say, Father, I want a car. Okay? That's not specific, is it? Anybody been to a junkyard? Yeah. Everybody ever seen a junkyard? Yeah. Do you realize in a junkyard there's plenty of cars? Yeah. Huh? So if you say, Father, I want a car, how does he know you don't want one of them junkyard cars? <laughs> That's why I said pray exactly, because when you're praying to God, you have to be specific. It's not a general thing. You have to be specific. You, sh you should say, Father, I want a 19, uh, I'm sorry, I want a 2012 um, whatever. Okay, I want a 2012. I want it to be gray. I want it to have gray interior. You know, I want it to have these kind of wheels. I want this equipment on it. You know, such and such and such and such and such and such. You know, it needs four wheels. It needs a steering wheel. Let's be specific, okay? But this type of prayer, you pray to God to get exactly what you want from God. Number two, you pray the prayer of faith to get your needs met. So if you have a need... Write it down, tell God what it is so he can meet it. And he can meet it through the prayer of faith. Amen. Now, if you're too lazy to do that, no problem. You just have needs the rest of your life. Amen. You're always going to have. You think, oh, my God, I want you to do this. God ain't going to do nothing. He says, you have not because you what? That's what he says. His word says, you have not because you what? Ask not. That's, that's the reason you're not or you don't possess or have the things that you want, need, and desire because you probably haven't asked God. Or if you have asked him, you haven't asked him correctly. Amen. Amen? So number three, the purpose of this prayer is to obtain the desires of your heart. How many of you know that needs and desires are two different things? Yeah. Huh? Needs and desires. See, needs are things you have to have. Desires are thing you want, things you want. Okay? A need is you need some type of transportation to go back and forth to work. Would you agree? A desire is to have the exact kind of car, high-end car, that you dream about. It can be whatever one. I can name a bunch of them, but I don't know. Which one you like? See, I did this one Sunday, and I messed up. You know, I'm thinking really high-end cars, and I asked a lady, and she said, Buick. <laughs> well, I'm not knocking Buick. Buick's a good car. I can think of something I want a little higher than a Buick, though. That's all. I drove a Buick for years. One of the best cars I ever owned. But when I was making reference to it, uh, when you talk about high-end, Buick doesn't really fall in that category of high-end, expensive, Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So when I ask for a desire, watch this. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Don't limit God when it comes to your desire. Yeah. Yeah. Most people limit God. See, the scripture says in Ephesians 3.20, he can do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Amen. Well, see, he can do that, but there's another part of that scripture. It's according to the power, according to the ability that is at work in you. So if you don't, if it's not working in you to think that high, some people, when you start talking about cars like um, uh, Bentleys, Rolls Royce, Porsches, you know, Jaguars, stuff like that, people cannot, it, it's like they go tilt when they think, that because those cars cost so much. Or Maserati or a, um, Aston Martin. Or, you know, those car really high-end, expensive, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollar cars. 
There's some people that, well, I don't see why you got to spend that much money for a car. Why not? They're making them. If they're making them, don't you think you can have it? Oh, Pastor, that's such a waste of money. See, that's how you think. That's how you think. See, you're limiting God. He made those nice cars for us. He, he made those cars for his children. His children don't even want to, want to blue. I don't think I should spend that kind of money. No, the reason you say you don't think you should spend that kind of money is because you don't have that kind of money. <laughs> but now, if you had that kind of money and you didn't know, to, didn't know what to do with all the money that you had, you start saying, well, see, I, mean, I can drive me a Rolls Royce, no problem. I go down there and buy me two or three of them. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. How about a yacht in the harbor? Well, we can't. See, there ain't nowhere here to put a real yacht. <laughs> you got to go to the east coast or the west coast, you know, to have you a, 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 a 70, 80, 90, 150, 200 foot yacht. Okay? Then, you know, or how about a vacation home in, in um, Florida, vacation home in California? Vacation home in the Bahamas. Or... Nothing wrong with those things. Because, see, you, see, you're laughing. And, see, I already hear the negative stuff going on in people's hearts. Because what God says in his word, and I remember, I remember like it was yesterday. Yesterday, when you read in the book of De Deuteronomy, it talks about houses. Amen. Houses. And what? Lands. Now, y'all understand that? See, that's what he wants you to have. He doesn't want you to have a house. He said, houses and lands. Not a piece of land. Lands. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to raise your level of thinking. <laughs> See, well, there's other things. I mean, don't get me to talking because that's all I talk about. That's where I live. I live in a stratosphere. There you go. Flying above everybody looking down on them. Not commercially in my jet. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. And who's yet? Not the churches yet.